Today's video is sponsored by Izzy Swan's Toolmasters Association. Now in a recent video I built this tilting router lift and by attaching it to an elliptical jig I was able to get some really cool patterns. Now today I want to show you how I built the elliptical jig. Now the elliptical jig is, works off of a really simple premise. You simply have two pivot points. Each pivot point runs along a different plane that is 90 degrees to each other. And then you have a marking point that's further out. Now when those two pivot points ride along the two separate planes, it creates an ellipse, or in this case, an elliptical arch. So this is a really quick way to mark out an arch for anybody who's interested. Now an elliptical jig works off the same premise, except for you have four blocks and two rails that allow you to complete an entire ellipse all the way around, which is kind of cool because you can cut out tabletops with a router and do a whole bunch of other things. So this build is relatively simple. I'm using some bamboo uh, sample boards that a subscriber sent me oh, a couple years ago and I'm just cutting out two 12 inch by 12 inch blocks. Now I want to say right now you can make these pretty much any size you want to create all kinds of different ellipses. So once I had the basic blocks cut out or the uh, panels cut out, I need to cut four blocks out. Now each of these blocks is going to have a dove, two dovetail sides or two sides with an angle on it and this is going to capture the guide rails that we're going to install later. Now after I'd had the blocks cut out, I cut out two guide rails before I changed the angle of the saw back to 90. So you're not, you can't really see very well from the video, but this will kind of give you a better idea here. You see how each of those cuts have a bit of an arch to it. Now that's about a 15 degree angle. The angle really isn't important. It just needs to have a way to capture the slides and it's more or less creating two long dovetails. Now this is really the most important part of the build. You want to make sure that those guide rails or slides are nice and snug between the blocks. You don't want them so tight that you can't move them, but you don't want them you don't want them loose enough that they can move wiggle back and forth in their slots. Now to make sure everything was nice and tight, I cut extra rails and just pushed the blocks up against each one of those and made sure that they were nice and true to each other, nice and snug as it were. And then I'm just tacking everything down with a 23 gauge brad nailer. Now at this point I'm going to drill a hole right in the center because I want this particular elliptical jig to be round. And then I took that over to the bandsaw, put a screw in the center position and then just pivoted it around the blade and that gave me a nice round base. Now once I have this all cut out, I need to make sure that I secure those panels in place forever and ever. And to do that, I'm going to mark out three hole positions on each block, and then I'm going to drill a countersink. Now I'm using my flush cut countersink. This countersink has like a little ring on it that stops it so it will only go so deep, which is really nice for controlling the depth of the countersink. I get asked a lot about where I get it. Now I ordered mine from bpway.com. They're made by Make It Snappy Tools, which make an entire line of really high quality countersinks. I like their stuff so much, about a year ago I asked them to put a kit together of all the stuff that I use on a very regular basis. And I think it's important to point out that this video is not sponsored by Snappy Tools. I've been an advocate for their products for a very long time and I'm very proud to have them as part of the Toolmasters Association. I'll be talking more about the Toolmasters Association in upcoming videos, but for now if you'd like to try the Izzy Kit, it's available at bpqa.com for 20% off by using the code TOOLMASTERS at checkout. With the plate secure, I cleaned up all the marks in the base with an orbital sander. And the next thing I need to do is cut the slides that move back and forth in the groove. Now you want these to be as small as possible so they don't interfere with each other when the grooves are crossing. When the slides are crossing the grooves? <laughs> so I make mine typically about three times the size of the groove opening. Now I want to add some bolts to these slides. So for that I'm using the counter bore, the quarter inch counter bore out of my Izzy kit. and this fits perfectly for quarter inch carriage bolts. So the head of the carriage bolt will actually sit below or above the base of the material, if that makes any sense. Like that. With, the, with those installed, I tightened the, the nuts down. That's just gonna keep everything nice and secure in those slides. And then I come back and double check just to make sure that everything is sliding like it's supposed to. Now for the plate, I'm using 
uh, flooring. It's this is that it's that Pergo style stuff that you get at one of the big box stores. I like using this stuff because it's fairly rigid and it's pretty tough stuff. So it works out really well for stuff like this, for like plates and, and patterns and that sort of thing. Now I will say, whenever you cut this stuff, you want to be wearing a dust mask or have really good dust collection or both. So I drew a line down the center of the plate and marked out some positions about every one inch all the way down the plate, leaving about six inches at the end. And then I just want to round over the side, so I used a uh, can to mark out the corners and a straight edge to kind of create a little bit of a taper that I'll come back and cut on the bandsaw. So after drilling all the holes, I finished the profiling over on the bandsaw and cleaned everything up off camera with a sander. Now the nice thing about using flooring is you can put marks on this and then with a little bit of denatured alcohol, clean up any mark, even if it's permanent marker. So this is the way it works. You put one position in one of the holes and another position in the opposite of the holes and that creates this pattern or elliptical. Now you can do different size ellipses by changing the hole position. So if you want something longer and narrower, you just simply change the hole positions to accommodate what you're looking for. Now I wanted to demo this by cutting out a big elliptical top with the router, but I don't have material in my shop big enough. So I'm going to demonstrate it by adding a marker to the end of this and you'll see here in a second how cool this is and how it just creates this really cool elliptical pattern. So I screwed this little block to the end and drilled a hole through it so I could put a marker in there. Now I'm gonna to have to ask you to use your imagination a little bit. If you imagine that that little spot or block is a router, you can simply run the router around your material and do it in several passes so you're not trying to cut through like say a three quarter inch top all in one pass. But what it'll do is create this elliptical top for you. Now you can do, now you can do really all kinds of crazy things with a simple elliptical jig like this and we'll do much more with, uh, with this jig in the future and upcoming videos. So there you go, it's really relatively pretty simple. Now by changing the hole positions you can get narrower, longer ellipses and different patterns that you can just attach a router to the end of and use in material. You get some really cool and pretty unique patterns that would be otherwise hard to duplicate. Now I have lots of ideas for the elliptical jig in conjunction with the tilting router base that I'll be sharing in upcoming videos. I also have some other ideas for the tilting router base with a patterning device that'll make it even more versatile. So don't forget I'm on Instagram. If you want to see what's happening in the shop as it's happening in the shop, I post pictures over there daily and we'll talk to you soon.